Hello! Today's talk is a very special one. I had the opportunity to chat with Gianfranco Pizzuto, CEO and founder of Automobili Estrema, a new company established in the Italian Motor Valley and that just over a week ago unveiled the first full-scale model of its upcoming full electric hypercar, Fulminia. The name in Italian means lightning fast and it also recalls its full electric nature. Gianfranco Pizzuto is a pioneer in the field of sustainable and electric mobility. In addition to his long experience as an entrepreneur and professional in the automotive industry, he realized a number of other activities ranging from keynotes to events in art and photography and humanitarian projects successfully realized in Africa. Just over a week ago, at Museo dell'Auto in Turin, the management team at Estrema presented the model of their 2040 horsepower hypercar that will be produced in only 61 units. Its futuristic exterior design takes inspiration from their company's logo itself to remark their identity and its forward-looking characteristics. At the same time, it takes inspiration from traditional Italian automotive design cues to reiterate its provenance. It also features extremely innovative and futuristic lines, especially visible in the back with its complex sculpture and the transparent recycled methacrylate used for the LED taillights, which carry out a double function, working both as a standout aesthetic feature and as an aerodynamic one. However, in a market where a new 2000 plus horsepower car for millionaires seems to pop up every week, the Fulminia and Automobili Estrema projects stand out for a number of reasons. Fulminia will feature some of the most advanced technology in the field of energy storage. It will be the first car in the world to use a hybrid battery pack combining solid state lithium ion cells with ultra capacitors. This technology, that boasts an energy density which in most cases is more than double that of regular lithium ion batteries with liquid electrolyte solutions, should ensure the Fulminia 450 watt hours per kilogram. Even more important is, while achieving this, solid state batteries save also around half the weight of a common lithium ion cell. The second reason that makes the Estrema project hugely interesting is its series of partnership with forward-looking companies that along with creating this visionary hypercar aim at developing the first solid-state battery gigafactory which will be located in Italy adding even more prestige to the Italian Motor Valley through cutting-edge innovation. Last but not least, Fulminia stands out because of its leader. As discussed in previous case studies published on the website which is linked below Luxury automotive is an extremely difficult sector to enter, with high barriers, and there are very few companies that actually made it in the last 30 years. Well, one of the characteristics that all of them have is a visionary figure at the top. Gianfranco Pizzuto has been at the forefront of the sustainable and green automotive revolution since his first investment in Fisker. In 2020, he established Estrema, which in his vision will be the perfect mixture of innovative and revolutionary technologies, superb Italian style and craftsmanship. But now, let's hear some more about this unique project from Mr. Pizzuto himself. Enjoy! Good afternoon, Gianfranco. Thank you very much for taking your time to attend. And so, a few days ago, we, we witnessed the presentation of Estrema and, uh, and the Fulminia with the first full-scale model and so I was curious to know a little bit about the background and the development process of this upcoming uh, electric hypercar. So uh, first of all after your experience with Fisker I remember also an old TED talk you, you made uh, talking about the difficulties in the development of electric vehicles and um, I was wondering uh, what is it that you brought from that experience and what sparked the idea of uh, realizing the Fulminia and Estrema as a reality in automotive? Well, you know, first of all, uh, since my Fisker time, the world changed, basically. Uh, back then, 
there were uh, just two companies working on uh, electric vehicles. One was a full electric vehicle, a battery electric, electric vehicle, which was Tesla. And we decided to uh, add a range extender. So our electric car uh, was uh, uh, what we called ever an ever electric vehicle extended range. So we were okay. playing a little bit with the word ever uh, because we could, of course, have additionally to the battery we had on board this generator, which was a, a gasoline driven generator and allowing to extend the range. So first 50 miles or 80 kilometers were done fully electric. And after the journey would continue, eventually, if you are not able to, or if you were not able to charge it electrically, uh, you had to switch on, or actually it went on automatically, uh, the generator. And you had another uh, 300 miles additional range. Uh, the difficulty at the beginning was uh, mainly one, the battery. Uh, we couldn't find really uh, a lot of companies that we could uh, source. Um, so we had to source from a company that was a startup for itself. And it was the company was uh, by the name of A123. And it didn't go very well because, uh, you know, when you, when you do everything from scratch, of course, learning curve, That's we were pushed by the investors to reach certain milestones. So we were constantly under pressure 24 seven to meet certain milestones, to get and do an IPO because, you know, the investors, they typically want a very quick return on investment. They don't want to sit on, on top of the money. They want the money to come back as quick, quick as possible by a factor five, 10, and even more. So this was very tricky for us. So we had new technologies, a total new development, um, the, the basically almost all the funds coming from uh, uh, outside investors because our initial seed fund was very limited. So we needed additional funding. So all these uh, elements were very negative uh, for the experience with Fisker. Uh, of course, then you have the human factor you have someone that is, uh, you know, uh, selling himself rather than selling the company, uh, mm -hmm. profiling himself rather to profile the company. You know, you have also these human aspects inside a company, inside a, a startup. So uh, fast forward now almost 15 years, we have learned a lot. Mm -hmm. First of all, my network is really gigantic in this industry. Uh, I know pretty much everybody and pretty much everybody knows about me. So when I say something and I, and I touch something and I try to shave, they understand that I, I pretty know what I'm doing and what I'm saying, you know? So this helps. And this is something I didn't have 15 years ago. Today I have a network I didn't have today. I have OEMs. Uh, and uh, tier one, tier two, tier three suppliers that we didn't have. Uh, the industry uh, is grown 100 folds or maybe 1000 folds, you know, and we can cherry pick almost the partners, you know, and indeed, uh, I was very lucky that that is a, I call it always a combination of many factors. First, for me, the the lockdown in March of uh, 2020 was a fortunate event because okay. otherwise I would do something, something completely different and the project hypercar would not be the project we know today. Okay. So I know it, it is a tragic event. I, I'm, I'm, I understand it very well, but you know, there is always uh, the two faces of, of the metal, of the coin, of the token. You know, yep. you, you see one, there is a face, but you know, there is another face on the reverse part. So, uh, for me, it was a kind of, uh, quite, a, a positive strike of, uh, this event. And it allowed me to, uh, manage to get access to people 
that normally probably I wouldn't be able to access because these people were at home exactly like me. Uh, everything was standing still. And then, you know, as uh, almost like magic, we, we, we started to almost play a little bit mm -hmm. with the idea of creating something like that. And then by playing with it, with the idea of doing something very exclusive and, uh, you know, like the hypercar, uh, I came across through a friend which was doing uh, packaging of batteries for me already many years before, which is Imecar Electronic in Antalya, Turkey, Mark Lander. So Mark Lander said, there is someone I would like you to meet, you know, and uh, this gentleman is a professor of the University of Brussels, and he is really uh, like a genius in solid state technology, okay? Mm -hmm. So we met, uh, we met uh, as, as, as in this occasion right now over Zoom okay. and we start talking about this technology and the constraints, you know, and so this, this gentleman, this uh, professor of the University of Brussels, his name is Noshin Omar and he is the founder of Abi Group. Uh, so he worked already in this field uh, at least 10 years, I, I guess 10 or 12 years. And he did a spin-off about two years ago, creating this company, you know, after, you know, many years of researches and studies and so on and so forth. As a matter of fact, he's uh, recognized internationally because he's publishing a lot of uh, um, articles about solid state technology and about battery technology in general. And, and therefore, uh, our first, first meeting was uh, very positive. I, I quickly realized how deep the knowledge of Noshin was. And we were talking about, you know, how, how fast we can charge, how light it is, the uh, energy uh, density. And uh, Noshin told me right away that uh, in order to have all this uh, power uh, available for, for Minia with 1.5 megawatt, which yeah. is more than 2,000 horsepower, we needed some something to act like a turbo in the uh, combustion engine. And this is That's why we have the ultra caps uh, combined. It's, it's what we call a hybrid battery pack. So mm -hmm. it, it has uh, double chemistry, uh, one being the solid state for the long range and the other one being uh, the ultra caps for the immediate power release and also immediate power recovering once you break and once you, uh, you know, you get off the, 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 the pedal. And so the combination of the two technologies was key for us to uh, start developing the battery pack, okay? And of course, another uh, a very positive uh, strike was the fact that uh, I met with Fabrizio Martini mm -hmm. of Electra Vehicles. Uh, which is uh, an Italian gentleman that uh, spent many times at the MIT in Boston working on ultra caps and working on the software to manage basically a very sophisticated BMS based on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Okay, and a new generation of software, not the BMS we know today yeah. where you program uh, something and it's basically... Uh, fix, you know, maybe in some cases you can do some updates, but it's by far not capable of doing decision by itself. It, it, it needs to be programmed. So what uh, basically Fabrizio Martini and his uh, team is doing is that this software learns. It learns how you drive, it adapts, it understands how cold it is, how far you have to go, uh, the state of health of the battery. An, uh, an incredible number of information that is capable to do, uh, you know, uh, maybe 8%, 10% more range than without it. So it's all going to meet, you know, starting with uh, aerodynamic study to the technology on the battery to the software. Everything is really high technology. And and it is very costly, as you can imagine. Uh, there is no way that we can pack this in, in, in a city car. And 
that's the reason why we need a hypercar to make it uh, visible. Yeah. So that's very interesting, actually. So it will be in some way uh, a car that will be unique for every owner because it will adapt its behavior depending on the driving style, on the use that everyone will do about of it, right? Yeah. Right. That's very interesting. And um, so we saw now uh, at the presentation the, the model, which was about the design and the features, like the external features. Um, what will be the next step for the car in technical development in general? No uh, we, we did. Uh, we froze the design. Okay, so yeah. we know how the car will uh, look like. Uh, we have developed certain components, uh, like we know we're going to use uh, carbon fiber. Uh, we know that we have uh, special LED lights. We know we have special um, laser beam uh, lights. We know we will have uh, what they call uh, uh, like, like a crystal style uh, kind of uh, uh, rear lightning system. Um, I, I mean, we have a lot of technological advances together with design advances because it's not just a light, it's also um, intended to be uh, a sort of help to keep downforce to the car high. So it's an element integrated with flaps, extractors, uh, wings, etc. So it's all part of a very sophisticated aerodynamic design. And by the way, I want also to take uh, the opportunity to thank the Politecnico di Torino, which helped us a lot. And uh, studies are still, uh, you know, uh, going into different stages uh, before we are getting, as you can imagine, to the final uh, release. We still have to define some little details. It will not be very, um, you know, concerning the design. You, you, you basically won't realize anything, but it's uh, regarding the aerodynamic that you will, uh, of course, have some uh, positive increase. So, um, saying that the design was frozen, uh, this meant for us the possibility to produce the scale model, which is a real model. This is a um, five times smaller than the one in real. Okay, so yeah. and it, it stays here on my desk, on the desk I have on my back. Um, the one we have is a, a real size model. Yeah. And uh, this was uh, basically end of phase one. Now we're getting in phase two. Phase two means the next about nine to 12 months where we are creating uh, a running prototype, something that can drive, um, which is, uh, initially limited to a certain power output and and then you know we have like a like a like a way to increase little by little right. and until we reach maximum power uh, until we put the battery under stress and, and see how it's going to win, withstand how many cycles uh, we can do uh, but because it's such a very particular car uh, our customers are not going to use the car every day to commute. You know, it's, it's not that you're doing uh, 50, 80, 100 miles every day yeah. going back and forth. This is a very sophisticated car that actually wants to be on a track, to be fully, um, uh, so that you can fully take the power out of it. So we are doing a, a, a kind of approach uh, starting at a certain range of power output and then we increase. Same thing we do with the battery, uh, with rapid uh, charge and discharge, see how it withstand the stress. But uh, also discussing the other day, last week in Torino with uh, Fabrizio Martini, he was pretty sure that the main battery won't have any stress because okay. all the, or basically most of the stress is taken by the ultra caps. Okay. Uh, and this is the reason why uh, they're uh, engineered uh, to take this stress. And, and therefore, he said, I can be pretty sure the, the battery pack could uh, theoretically last a million kilometers or 600,000 miles. 
because of the ultra caps. And he said also the ultra caps, they have a very long life and you actually don't even need to uh, change it completely, but you could do some sort of refurbishment, you know, okay. and, but I don't think that people would do this amount of mileage uh, with our hypercar. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Um, so uh, since you mentioned it, do you have uh, any specific figure that you're looking at or that you would like to achieve in terms of charging time? Yeah, so uh, a full charge discharge is when we go to the uh, maximum optimization level is many thousands. So, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's more than enough. Okay. Um, of course, one of the big talking points uh, even during this presentation is the fact that you are featuring the solid state batteries because it's something that hasn't been achieved so far, right? Also, I was wondering, um, one of the main issues that usually this, uh, especially like performance automakers have with batteries is the, the weight and uh, solid state battery because they have this high energy density should allow you to save a lot of weight. Um, what figure are you looking at in terms of weight and was the choice of solid state battery also dictated by the fact that you could save weight and improve the car's driving capabilities? Yes, yes, absolutely yes. You can imagine um, a car that weighs uh, uh, two tons on a track. Uh, there is some rules by physics that you can have all the electronic on board but it's still two tons, you know. Uh, so the uh, the ideal weight is probably uh, a, a good friend of mine is doing a car, um, and his name is David Brabham. Uh, so David Brabham has a has a hypercar supercar, uh, which is uh, mainly used on tracks. Okay, and I think he his weight is like a thousand kilos okay. or a thousand. Well, okay. No. Proper race car weight. Almost. It's a proper race car. Uh, more than sheer power, uh, the weight factor is uh, the most important one. And the weight to power ratio. And I said to, when we were talking to the engineers, we set a limit of 1,500 kilos. Okay. It has to be under 1,500 kilos. Even if it's for one kilo, I don't care but not more than 1,500 because, and I tell you why, I had once, many years ago, uh, I bought a used Porsche 964 uh, Carrera 4. Yeah. Uh, it was a 1989 model, okay, uh, six gear. I don't remember, maybe it was a five gear. Don't remember anymore, but it has 200, and it had 250 horsepower. Yeah. So. You know, compared for today's standard, is very little, um, but it was under 1,500 kilo in weight and it had four wheel drive. And I, and to tell you honestly, I did one of the biggest mistakes in my life when I sold it. Okay. Because to me, this was my favorite Porsche of all times. And I had many Porsches. I had GT3, I had Turbos, uh, but this 964 Carrera 4. Uh, was for me my favorite of all times. It was incredible nice to drive. You know, it had uh, a perfect balance, power, weight, and handling, and everything. I really enjoyed that time. But uh, it was in a time where you always want more, and then the turbo, and then this, and then that. But then, uh, you know, uh, I realized that this, this balance was so perfect. Therefore, uh, with the solid state technology, uh, we could save half of the weight uh, compared to standard uh, li li lithium ion cells yeah. using uh, liquid electrode. Yeah. So this was, uh, of course, important. And also uh, the safety factor because, uh, you know, uh, they can't burn. Yeah. And they can't ignite. Therefore, this was also important to us that we would have something that if happens on a track and shit happens sometime, uh, you will be 100% sure. You will be, you know, inside the safety cell, uh, carbon fiber, and, uh, you know, all kind of uh, 
sophisticated uh, 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 system that is protecting the driver and also the battery. And by the way, the battery pack is also structural. Uh, it, it, it is a part of the structure uh, because we use the uh, prismatic cells. So it's, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, like a little prismatic, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, basically the size of this. Okay. okay. And, and then we stack it together and, and it, it, it become, it, it's becoming part of the structure. So it's giving strength to the whole thing. And then we have less uh, problems with uh, thermal runaway. Uh, so, you know, all, all in all, we save weight and volume. Yeah. And, and therefore, yeah. therefore, performance is better, handling is better. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, uh, in terms of performance, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. The, the, then the difficulty is, of course, achieve that. And do you think you can achieve this uh, battery development where many like big companies are, are failing so far because you you're like aiming at a small number or you just have like something new that hasn't been tried yet so Noshin has a secret sauce okay and and he's not even telling me what this exactly is okay so he's telling me basically what he's using uh, but he's not, of course, I mean, this is his IP, you know, um, and this is uh, good enough for me. Uh, it's, it's like a little bit the story of the Coca-Cola. Yeah. Coca-Cola, you can have Coca-Cola all over the world, all over the places, but there is only one factory that does the syrup. Syrup is done in one location, a very, you know, old recipe coming from when Coca-Cola was invented in Atlanta, Georgia at the end of the 19th century. Therefore, uh, we would like to do the same. We will have gigafactories uh, as many as we can all over the places with solid state cells, but we are not giving uh, the secret sauce to anybody. Okay. This is the trick. Um, we start like artisans. That means that we have now a small production line at Noshin's uh, labs in Brussels, which is inside the uh, Solvay campus. He's moving to a bigger location because uh, there are um, constraints regarding the size of the facility he is in right now. So he will move to a uh, bigger location very soon where he will install the pilot line. So what uh, Estrema will have is the uh, not the one that they are doing right now in the lab is having the one uh, that Noshin will do in the pilot line, which will be the right uh, 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 volume, weight, energy density, shape and everything we need for Estrema. Okay. So in Estrema we will pack uh, the batteries coming, the cells coming from the pilot line. So from the pilot line, it goes into the car. So we are able to uh, scale up to megawatt hour per year capacity. That means that plus minus we will do 20, 25, maybe 30 battery packs that we will all test. And then only then when we have reached every milestones that we need, then we scale up to gigafactory level. Because right now the cost is like 3000 euros per kilowatt hour our cost. That means that uh, a battery like this is at least 300,000 uh, euros uh, that you have in, to invest and nobody would buy. Uh, mm -hmm. Only only someone doing a hypercar could use. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, when we then move and scale to gigawatt hour uh, size, we could have like 40 to 50,000 battery packs produced per year. That means that the price is dropping down immensely, as you can imagine. Yeah. So it, it, we are still not there yet. Uh, in theory, uh, I have specialists, engineers, professors, technicians, all say that we are at a good point. But no one has the certainty that we will get there where we would like to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's 
still, you know, no one has a crystal ball. Of course. Uh, nor, uh, nor I have it. Um, therefore, uh, I know it will be a roller coaster again. I did it once 15 years ago. And I will do it a second time. And this, yeah. this time, I'm the one in the lead. 15 years ago, there was someone else. And uh, this time, it's me. So if I do good, it's me. If I do shit, it's me. You know, so. But, uh, and also, I mean, you presented Estrema as a car company, but also a technology company. So this Gigafactory, which is another objective of yours, will come then later. So first... That's, yeah, that's, okay. that's a proof of concept. We need a proof of because there there, there are people uh, that yesterday I was uh, getting through the review uh, the our PR, our incredible efficient PR uh, partners uh, are sending us. Uh, I was getting a review saying that we might be vapor uh, wave. You know, okay. Uh, okay. I don't know, but uh, you know the people involved are for sure not vaporwave. You yeah, know, of people are professors, engineers, and they have a proven track record of what they did in the past. And I'm not talking about the past of one or two years. I'm talking about past of at least 15 years in this particular field. Uh, I want to mention Jerry Hughes, which was uh, one that uh, of the very few engineers that started the NEO EP9 project, okay? Yeah. Um, and, and you know what the NEO EP9 project yeah, yeah, is? Yeah. Then he was leading the, the Formula E of NEO, and I think he won the first two uh, championships with NEO. So Jerry Hughes is with us. Then Paul Fickers, same thing. He was an uh, 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 engineer mate of uh, Jerry Hughes. Uh, he also was involved with the AP9. He also was involved in Formula E. He uh, was uh, a, a test engineer, a chief test engineer at Maserati and so on and so forth. Then we have uh, Mark Lander that did thousands of battery packs in all his career from, um, you know, uh, uh, motorboats. Uh, helicopters and airplanes and I don't know and, and cars of course and trucks and buses and so on and so forth so much of an experience so I'm really looking forward to work with them on challenging what we will get uh, as challenge coming yeah. uh, down the road I know the, uh, I, you know I'm turning 60 uh, in, in, in less than two months so I have seen a lot of troubles in my life already, and I know they will come. You don't have to ask for they will come. Okay. The good thing is that we are prepared and that we have a very strong team. It's not me. It is a very exclusive, strong team, and we are really glued together in these uh, 12 months since we, we all work from different corners. of. I have... Uh, Jerry in UK, uh, and then uh, people in Denmark, and in Bologna, and in Torino, and in Modena, and in California. Do I have, uh, ah, and in Turkey, of course. Yeah, you know, and Belgium. Okay, so you see, this all works wonderfully uh, over, over our digital uh, network we have. And then it also works in real because uh, we ship. Uh, very quickly components from one part to the other one. Now we have collected uh, everything in Torino and then we are now moving everything to Modena because Modena will be the heart of our company and I don't know yet where the Gigafactory will be. It's uh, too soon to say. Yeah. Uh, it could be Modena, it could be in Torino, it could be somewhere else. You know, uh, We will see. But now we focus on getting the battery on the Fulminia, making the prototype in the next 9 to 12 months, um, start uh, doing some communication about, oh, by the way, we have the battery inside and the car is moving, right? Yeah. And then we look to uh, uh, meeting the milestone that we have set to ourselves, which is sending or, 
or handing out uh, the first Fulminia within the second half of 2023 to the first customer. This is our goal. Okay. And, and I'm not the first customer because eventually I'm customer number 61. 61. Yeah. And you mentioned 61 is the number that you will produce. Yeah. And I mean, fair enough. Also, the history in automotive, but in any industry, I think it teaches us that real innovation and the big steps forward come from daring ideas and people that want to go on and create something new. Uh, okay, I think our time is almost up. If I can, one last question. So regarding the Fulminia, let's go back to the car itself. You mentioned the maximum expression for the car will be on a track, but do you see it also as a Grand Tourer or what will be the, the ultimate use that you see for the car? Uh, I, I think, you know, I'm actually back to my roots in beautiful South Tyrol. And I used to live many years in the U.S., where, uh, of course, mainly the interstates are, you know, endless straight ahead for many miles. So you, every car is good enough to go straight, right? So the handling will be, and the handling and then the acceleration, then pulling out corners and going up and then, you know, cornering again. This is what I love, and I have plenty of such roads here. Of course, uh, the, 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 the risk is that in no time you're, you're super fast and you get a ticket and you uh, probably get also arrested because if you're not careful, in, 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 a, in a blink of an eye, you are you know, far more than you uh, would allow to be. Okay? So let's say that we are capable of maybe to trigger something that we, like you know, like in the Formula One, when they enter in the box, uh, yeah. that they have this limiter. In speed limiter, yeah. Yeah, maybe we do something like that somehow. I don't know, uh, but uh, of course, I think the mixed road. I mean, it doesn't make, at least to me, um, fun to drive on the autobahn just to be at 300 kilometers an hour. It's boring. After 10 minutes, it's boring, and it's also sucking up all the energy very quickly yeah. because the faster you go with an electric car as you know the more you have constraints uh, with aerodynamics everything because it's so efficient everything is then uh, negative to the consumption therefore the reason is not that you have to go of course uh, that kind of speed the 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 fun should be in the handling and in the endless acceleration and overtaking and all that that you make in total safety and uh, and, and this is of course in, in roads we have right here but you have similar uh, interesting roads in the uk for instance uh, i love california uh, some roads in california especially when you go towards the mojave desert you know i think outside the crowd of the metropolitan area of a city like london or la or milan or rome this car makes a lot of fun so okay. not for sure and of course there will be someone that is in italian we say uh, andare a fare le vasche okay yeah just you know show off a little bit <laughs> here and there okay <laughs> if you are in monte carlo then you go from uh, the port uh, and, and then there is the Grimaldi Forum uh, and, and then you go up to the uh, casino, you know, and, and, and then back again and then maybe uh, you stop at the Place de Casino and you place the car there so that everyone can admire the car. Of course, this is part of the show and yeah. uh, I understand someone will enjoy doing it uh, e even though I think uh, majority will like to be either on a winding road or on a track. Okay, uh, I think okay the time is up, and um, so I don't want to take any more of it. <laughs> and thank you very much for uh, taking your time and for answering these questions. And uh, good luck with whatever is coming, and I'll be following closely the future developments. Grazie mille. Grazie.